Welcome to another RDWorks Learning Lab. Today will be nothing to do with RDWorks or really much to do with my lovely machines that I've got here. Um, Christmas has come a little bit early and uh, I have been lent for one year a very nice fibre optic laser machine. Why? Your guess is as good as mine. They want to know how it works. I exaggerate slightly. Look, come around and have a look. The guys at Lotus Laser, sounds like a Chinese company, doesn't it? But they're only based about 15 or 20 miles away from me. And they produce machines like this, marking machines for industry. Now, these are not hobby machines, really, because you can't do much with them, except If you've got thousands of items like this that you want to laser mark at very high speed, then they will design you some kit that will carry these through the machine and mark them. So their specialisation is in using standard technology like we've got in here, a standard MOPA laser, we'll talk about that in a minute. But they also do make machines, like the good old Chinese machines behind me. And within machines similar to this, they also use RF CO2 lasers. Because the frequency from a CO2 laser is completely different to the frequency of light that's used in this laser. Now these are all things that we're going to talk about later on in this session. To be honest, I know very little about fibre lasers. So why have they lent this machine to me for a year to play with? And the answer is very simple. They don't have a great deal of time to spare to play with these machines. They work with the specification that the laser manufacturer has given them. And if you're a product engineer and you want a machine to do this job, then Lotus Laser will design your machine, they will do all the research work and they will tell you the best possible parameters for using your machine. Now, there are absolutely millions of combinations of parameters for this machine. And that's what, I wouldn't say it frightens me, but it leaves a lot of opportunity, let's put it that way, for me to dig into dark corners and find out things that maybe these guys can't find out or don't know about the machine. Now, don't get me wrong, they already know a great deal about this machine but they don't get the opportunity to dig into the dark corners with the same degree of ignorance that I will dig into those dark corners. Sometimes knowledge is a limiting thing and ignorance just leaves a completely open playing field. So that's the way that I should be tackling this problem. I should be using any experience that I've gained from my good old Chinese machines which are continuous wave lasers. That means the power is steady all the time. This is not a CW machine. This is a very, very fast and very small pulsing laser. So there's all sorts of differences between this laser and what we're used to. So I don't want to confuse anything that I'm doing with this machine with the current series of RD Works Learning Lab. Now I really need a, a, a very creative and catchy title for this new series. Fibre Laser Learning Lab. That sounds great. Yeah, that's enough thinking. Now, several major things are different about this type of machine. First of all, we've got a very small table, as you can see from the size of my hand. It's only about, the work area is only about six inches diameter. So this is a very limiting sort of technology. It's designed for one application really and that's marking. It's not a cutting machine although I'm warned and told that you can actually cut metal with this machine. Hmm, I'm yet to find out about that. Okay so now here's the lens and the table is here some 10 or 12 inches below the lens. Now that makes it a very very long focal length lens. 
Now it is a rather special lens. It's not a plano convex lens like we're used to, or a meniscus lens even. It's um, capable of swinging and changing and keeping the focus over quite a large area. Now I'm told that the spot size on the table here is about 0 0.065 of a millimetre. Now that's better than I can get with my compound lens which sits only 21 millimetres away from the surface. So I'm going to be very interested to see just what this machine is capable of. Do I believe it's 0 0.065? That's what the spec says. I'm also told that jobs like this, which are, as you can see, on a curved surface, are absolutely simple for this. It can work over quite a large focal range. Well, X and Y are built up here in this head. This is something called a Galvo head up here, which basically means, hey, look, it's a lot easier for me to describe what's happening with this head here. The laser beam comes in, and here we've got an X mirror, which is driven by an X motor. And here we've got a Y mirror, which is driven by a Y motor. As you can see, the beam comes in and bounces off these mirrors and then passes through this lens that we've just spoken about and then comes down and hits the image plane here, which is the table. There is nothing to worry about mechanically as far as X and Y is concerned on this machine. It's all buried up in the top here and I can't touch it. Maybe that's why they lent me this machine, because I can't get to anything. All I can do is play with the numbers and the controls. What controls? This is it. This is the control panel. There's button, there's lights that tell me that the laser is on or off. We've got something here which enables me to override the interlocks and not bring the guard down. And then we've got power on and power off and an oh shit button. Now, hiding inside the machine there is the red box. That's what is controlling the fibre laser. And just up in here we've got the fibre laser and the beam preparation system before it goes down into the actual Galvo system. There's nothing. I can't touch anything. So this is the only way that I can control the machine by this piece of software, which is called Lotus Mark. But in reality, it's a special version of EasyCAD. Down the side here, I've got a load of parameters which I can play with. Now, these guys that supplied the machine do know quite a lot of settings for this machine and how to get certain things to happen. I think they're purposely keeping me in the dark because they don't want me to know what they do. Not because it's a secret, because they want to try and find out if there's anything different that I can do that gets them to the same place quicker or differently. Now they came and installed the machine for me and gave me a very quick brief lesson on how to push the buttons and um, they provided me with this introductory piece of documentation which really doesn't tell me a great deal about how to operate the machine. They left me with a chart of numbers and told me that anything between 1 and 350 nanosecond pulses will work either continuous wave or these various frequencies that I've got here. If I choose the frequency to go with the nanosecond pulse, I will get what they call peak output. Now looking a little bit further into it, we've got a chart with all these various wave shapes on here, which I will begin to explain to you later. I mean, I don't fully understand them. I do know that up here it says peak kilowatts. Kilowatts? Hang on, this is a 20 watt machine. How on earth can I get kilowatts out of a 20 watt machine? Very interesting question. So there's lots of fascinating stuff that I'm going to have to dig into in the new year when I start this new series off. But I'm just giving you a little bit of a preview as to my early Christmas present. OK, now don't get too concerned that I'm going to run away and not support the Learning Lab project. We've certainly come a long way in four years about understanding how these little Chinese constant wave glass tube machines work. And it's been a fascinating exercise. We haven't quite finished yet, but we're pretty close to the end of understanding virtually every dark corner 
that I could find on this machine. Now, I'm going to attempt to do the same sort of thing with this machine. With that, it was a much easier technology. It was an engineering task as well. This is not so much of an engineering task. This is really just a, as I described it before, hunting for the needle in the haystack, trying to find the right parameters to do the right job. Now, I'm told that this machine can do all sorts of things. One thing I'm certain it can't do is make me more coffee. But if you've got a marking project and you're in industry or a small business and you've got volumes that you want to pass through and mark, then this is the sort of machine that you need. You don't need a glass tube laser like we've been working on for the last four years. This is a completely different animal. The one good thing this machine came with is a really cool pair of shades. Now I'm not deluded enough to think that these make me look like a film star. Oh, I don't know. But they are an essential part of using this machine. Now with the CO2 laser, these cheap glasses were all that I needed to protect my eyes. That's not the case with this machine, which works at a completely different wavelength. It's a lower wavelength, one micron wavelength, and it will bite and it will damage your sight permanently because it goes right through the front of the eyeball and contacts the retina at the back and will damage your retina. So it's absolutely essential that when this machine is open, you remove any risk of reflections and damage to your eyes by yeah, by looking like a film star. Well, in the new year, when I start the first session, that particular session might be of interest to you guys because I'm going to be talking about the way in which the glass tube 10.6 micron laser works. And I'm going to try and explain how I think I should be able to carry over some of that learning to this type of laser, the fiber laser, which works completely differently. But after that, because all I'm going to be doing is hunting for parameters and trying to perform some tricks with this machine. You can see a lot of those tricks already on YouTube. We're still on the run up to Christmas, just a couple of days away, and I'm pleased with my new Christmas present. So I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a very, very Happy New Year. Thanks again for your time. Handsome is a relative term, you know. But I don't have any handsome relatives. Lots of delusionary ones. <laughs>